Hey Way fam, we're so excited to see you here on a Way World Outreach Sermon. Thank you for tuning in. Now let's get ready for this week's word. So we've been, uh, on, we've been talking about big and, and, and last week I began to talk about big obedience or, or, or just obeying big. And I want to continue talking about that. And we, last week we talked about, we just began to introduce the subject of why even obey God? Why, why even obey? Obey God. So I want to open up with a scripture, and it's in 2 Peter 1 3. 2 Peter 1 3, and it says this By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. So before we talk about obedience, I want to say this God has given every single person. Every single believer, the power, say it with me, the power to live a life you couldn't live without the power. So if you're in this room and you're saying, I can't, I understand, you can't. But when you become a believer, God gives you the power to be able to live a new and godly life. So God gives you the power to obey. Now, as a believer, you have a choice. Before you were a believer, you didn't have a choice. I'll tell you why you didn't have a choice to obey, because you were bound. Even when you wanted to be free, you found yourself in a cycle you couldn't break. I have good news for every one of us. God is not asking us to do anything He hasn't empowered us to do. So he says, by his divine power, God has given us everything. Say with me, everything we need for living a godly life. We, re- we have received all this, all this power to live a new life by coming to know him. So the moment you came, you, you entered into a relationship with Jesus, he gave you all the power that you needed to be like him. Can we say this? God wants, God wants me to be like him. He didn't save me to remain the same. So he's empowered me. Oh, you don't have to say all that. I'm sorry to preach now. You guys are really good at this. When are we going to stop this? I just wanted to, the first line was the only one. But you guys, you guys are good. You guys are obeying. That's really good. But it starts with this realization because you'll never live a life that you don't know you can live. And that's why Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because he realized there were things I couldn't do, but now with the strength of Christ, I could do this. I could be sober. I could be free. I could love. I could forgive. I could be happy. I could prosper. I can do it through the power of the Holy Spirit. Is that right? We can do this. We can live it. The goal is to be like God. The goal is not to be like your friend, like your neighborhood, like your girlfriends, like your homies. Your goal is to be like God. And this is what we're running into. We're running into a church with an identity crisis. And the reason I'm saying this is that even the church is trying to be like the world. We're not supposed to be like the world. We're supposed to be like our God. When we were born again, God gave us his spirit so we can be like him, walk like him, and experience the life that he has for us. This is good stuff. You know what the scripture is saying? We can change. Do you think God's depressed? Do you think God's strung out? Do you think God is worried? You think God's a failure? So he's not. So if he's not, then we're not. Because that same God is in you. I love this. Come on. And we received all of this. I want you to get this. Not one day. Like one day I'm going to receive. He goes, no, you received it. Received, past tense. All of this by coming to know him. The, the one, what did it say? I got blinded by those lights. I can't read it. I mean, those lights are bright. <laughs> the one, who, I, I'm starting to see like speckles right now. 
The first time it ever happened. Did we, did we fix some lights or something? The one who called us to himself. Who did he, he called us to who? By means of his marvelous glory and excellence. He goes, I've called you. I've called you to me, and I've called you to be like me. Okay? So when you, the Bible says this. Jesus said this. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. People say, where is God? He goes, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Because I only do what he's told me to do. I only say what he told me to say. So, so if you've seen me, you've seen him. Now, God wants to go a, fur, a little bit further. This is what he wants. If you've seen her, Veronica, you've seen me too. Because she follows God's instructions. She lives a godly life. The reason there's so many atheists, they're looking for proof that God exists. And the proof that God exists is not, I'm going to get, of course, creation. But the real proof that God exists is your lifestyle. When they see the change in your life. So we're talking about obedience, and this is what it's all about, being like Christ. It's a lifestyle, and I love the lifestyle. Obedience. What does obedience mean? It's very simple, follow instructions. What does obedience mean? So we don't come here just to hear a word. We come here to be transformed. I'm not, I'm, you know what that means? Is that God might tell me, Marco, you got to change your attitude. Well, that's just the way I am. No, that's what you, you like to be, but we could change our attitudes. Can I hear an amen to that? I could change. I'm angry. Well, you know, I could ch God can change that. The fruit of the Spirit is not anger. It's love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, self-control. All, all these patience, all these things are the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. So we can do this and we can change. But before there's change, this is what God does. God confronts us with his standard. But he not only shows us his standard, he says, I empower you to live up to that. This is what happens with a dead church. A dead church lowers the standards of God to their level. That means they make God a God like them. Our God is not to make a God like us. Our God, our God wants to make us like him. Go on, give, give God some praise that we can change. Follow instructions. Obedience is awesome. There were some quotes I read today on obedience. And obedience is one of the quotes. Obedience is the mother of success. We covered that last week in John 1.8. He goes, if you, if you study my word continually and meditate on it day and night and are careful to observe everything written in it, you'll succeed and prosper in everything you do. So this is why I want you to get this. God, when he gives you instructions, is to help you succeed. He gives you instructions to help you succeed. He gives you instructions for your marriage to succeed. He gives you instructions for your thinking to succeed. He gives you instructions for your family to succeed. God wants you to succeed. You know what success means? Is that God gives you a vision and you hit it. That the vision comes to pass. That's success. There was another quote. Obedience brings success. Exact obedience brings miracles. We said, no, let's not just be casual obeyers, let's be exact obeyers. There was another quote I read today, and one act of obedience is better than a hundred sermons. <laughs> one act of obedience is better than a hundred sermons. That means we could be here hearing a hundred sermons, and if we don't obey, none of those sermons really matter. Is that right? It's what we do with the sermon that matters. It's what we do with the knowledge that matters. It's what we do with the education that matters. Are we applying it? Does anybody want some success in their lives? This is a success school. So why do we obey? Number one reason we obey. We obey God because we love God. That's a good one. We obey God because we love God. That's why we obey Him. In John 14, 15, it says this, if you love me, obey my commandments. So he said, do you really love me? I love you, Lord. He goes, very simple. This is how you show, I want to show God how much I love him. He goes, it's simple. When I, when I say something, do it. This is how you love me. In verse 21, John 14, 21, it says, those who accept my commandments. That means we can accept the commandments or God's instruction or we can reject it. But those who accept it is a group that accept my commands and 
obey them. What he's saying is you could say, that's true. And if you don't do it, you still are not saying or showing that you love God. Are, are there any God lovers in this house? Because when you're a God lover, you listen to God even over your lusts, over your emotions, over society. Come on, over pressure. I listen to God. I obey God. I love Him. You know what loving means? I choose Him over every other option. I choose Him even over my own options. I choose Him over my own desires. There's times my desires want to go left, and God says, no, not left, right. And you know what I have to do? I have to crucify my desires so I can show God I love Him, or either I'm going to love me more than I love Him, and this idea, what you choose is what you love. You guys get that? I love God, but I love weed. No, you love God. I mean, you love weed, and weed is your God. It's getting quiet up here. We must have, must have some weed smokers up in here. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I just, I just smoke weed just to take the edge off, Pastor. I get it. <laughs> Bible says, I, this is what Jesus says, I give you some peace that the world can't give you. He goes, stop, stop settling for the counterfeit high, and let me give you the real high. God says, follow me, and let me show you, and let me, let me get you a, give you a taste of what you've been looking for. I'm telling you, a Jesus high is better than a weed high. That's why people have turned in their weed for Jesus. Come on. It's better than an alcoholic buzz. Come on, a Holy Spirit. Come on, a Holy Spirit buzz is better than an alcoholic buzz. It is. And if you haven't tried it, you're missing out. You're bad. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones, are the ones who love me. The ones who love me are the ones that accept my commands and do them. These are the ones that absolutely love me because they choose me over every other option. See, love means to be devoted to, 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 devoted to, to worship, to adore, to choose over all, all other options. So when we're saying we love God, that means we're worshiping God. What he's saying here, those who worship me, obey my commandments. Those who worship me, they accept my commandments and they obey them. They're the ones that are devoted to me. Are there any devoted believers in this house? Okay, so number two. So why do we obey God? First reason we obey God, we love Him. Say it with me. We love God. So we obey God. All right. That's what we do. You know, we don't even know if this really, if we re, someone really loves God until pressure hits. Or, you're, or God asks you to do something you don't want to do. I run into this in counseling all the time. Like they want me to, they want me to counsel them in agreement with their thoughts. <laughs> and if I don't agree with them, they're mad. I've had people cuss me out in counseling. You're not seeing it. No, I'm seeing the scripture. I'm not seeing it your way. So now you're mad? That's right. Well, Pastor, what do they do when they cuss you off? It it's no skin off my back. That's their life. If they want to ruin their life, they can ruin their life. After they're gone, I'm happy. Because I'm obeying God no matter what. I'm trying to help you get to the place you've always wanted to be. But this is what God says. He gives us instructions we don't want to hear. Well, how does God speak? Well, first of all, he speaks through his word. Hallelujah. Second thing, he speaks through your pastor. Amen. Well, you're just a man. I know I'm just a man, but I'm speaking the word of God. So it's the same thing. Who else does he speak to? He speaks through your leaders. He, speaks through, he, come on, he speaks through your conscience. He speaks through dreams. He speaks through visions. He speaks. Real obedient people do what God asks them to do, even if it means picking up a cross and following him. I love God. I love God. You don't love God? What's wrong with you? 
There's a song like that. I love God. You don't love God? What's wrong with you? You guys got that? You guys know that song, I guess. <laughs> See, but lo- I'm going to say one more thing about love. Loving God is obeying God. Disobeying God is not loving God. <laughs> Let's look at the scripture. John 14, 24 says this. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. And remember, my words are not my own. What are you saying? Jesus said, those who love me, Jesus is saying, those who love me, this is what he says. No, those, no, anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. And remember, my words are not my own. What he's saying, I'm speaking from the Father. He's saying, this is it. If if you don't, if you don't obey me, this is what he's saying, you don't love me. The reason you don't obey me is because you love something more than me. Because when you're saying no to me, you're saying yes to your other God. So we're asking ourselves, what is that other God? I don't know what your other God is. What is the thing that gets you to say no to God and yes to yourself, yes to your pleasure, yes to your emotions? What, what is that thing? It could be a girlfriend could be your God. It could be a boyfriend could be your God. It could be money could be your God. I don't know what your God is. But let's look at this. Second reason why we obey. One is we love God. Second reason, an obedient person is a happy person. The opposite is also true. A disobedient person is a depressed person. And that's why we got so many depressed Christians and angry Christians and Christians with a lot of attitude. You know why? Because they know what they're supposed to do and they're not doing it, so now they got attitude. Have you ever met some Christians with just attitude? Like, what's wrong? With, what's wrong? I thought you were a Christian. But if they're, I'm going to get this, if they're unhappy all the time and mean-spirited and edgy, this is the truth. They're telling on themselves they're disobedient. I love the word because the word will make you happy. Obedience, I want you to get this. Obedience leads to emotional well-being. We were created to live in the will of God. We were created to live in the... So when we live according to the will of God, you know what we're doing? We're living the way we're supposed to live. And when we're living the way we're supposed to live, we are happy. We are happy. Me and Lisa are happily married for over 30 years. Happy, 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 don't worry, be happy. Like I am happy, happy with my wife. No other girl can compete with my wife. Well, you know, Lisa, you know, what, what? There's prettier girls, I don't think so. I love my, I'm focused on her. See, you only, see, you know how everything starts messing up? It starts failing in comparison. I'm just focusing on my wife, I love her. Okay, now, now I'm going to tell you about this, me love my wife. I'm happily married because I do relationships God's way. And when I do it His way, I get happy results. That means I could go through pain, I could go through suffering, I could go through trials, tribulations, but you can't steal my joy because my joy is not in my circumstance, my joy is in my relationship. I love it. You're, you, see, this is the crazy thing. If you're not finding your joy in your relationship with the Lord, who are, you, who are you giving the assignment to make you happy? That's why people are getting divorced. I'm not happy in this anymore. Why don't you learn how to be happy all by yourself? Why are you trying to get your husband to make you happy, your wife to make you happy? Why don't you learn how to be happy with God and become a happy person in your marriage and fix 50% of it? Someone's mad dogging me right now. Pastor, you don't know the wife I got. You don't know what's going on in my house. She's full of demons, my pastor. Well, you married her. Come on. But we got too much of that happening. We got too much of that happening in the church. Because we're waiting for something to make us happy, for a job to make us happy, for an amount of money to make us happy, for this girl to make us happy, for this, come on, we're waiting for something to make us happy, and God says, I give you my word, and my word, if you do it, it will release the joy that you're looking for. It's time to start working the word, like you told me. We got to work the word. 
John 15, 11 says this. Look at this verse. I have told you, this is Jesus, I have told you these things. Let's just say we're in a conversation, and he goes, all these things that I've told you, I've told you these things, so that, I want you to get this. When he says so that, this is what he's saying. This is the purpose I told, I told you this for this purpose. I told you this for this purpose. Now, this is what he's saying. I'm not giving you rules to mess up your life, to make your life boring, to control you. That's not why I'm giving you rules. That's not why I'm giving you commandments. I'm giving you my word so that. I want you to get this. This is my purpose. What's my motive? Look at this. So that you will be filled with my joy. And then he says, yes. You heard me right. What did he say? Yes. Look at what he says. Your joy will over. So as a believer, what should be overflowing out of your mouth should not be cuss words. What should be overflowing out of your life should not be anger, should not be attitude, should not be edginess, should not be hardness, should not be hate, should not be religion, should not be judgmentalism. What should be flowing out of your life is joy. We need some happy Christians. How are we going to sell Jesus if we're all depressed like the world? Right? We all bunch of depressed, mad Christians, attitude Christians, gangbanger Christians, putting hits on people, praying, Lord, if it's your will, take them out, take them out, Lord. If it's your will, take them out, Lord. <laughs> the wage of sin is death. <laughs> you start even speaking in tongues and everything with your witchcraft prayer. And if something bad happens, I'm saying, see, that's what you get for messing with me. <laughs> messing with God's anointed, that's what happens to you. Few crazy gangbanger Christians. <laughs> yes, look what it says. Yes, your joy will overflow. Look, and then he says in verse 12, this is my commandment. You see, he gives a command, and this is what he does. He says, this is your joy will flow, and then he gives a command. Because in the command of the Lord is the joy. He goes, I've told you these things, and if you carry them out, you're going to be filled, not with just joy. You know what's so cool? God is saying, I just don't want you happy. I want you happy like me. I'm not just giving you joy. This is what he's saying. I'm giving you my joy. Imagine if we get this joy. I believe this. People will stand in line to just get a dose of your Holy Ghost. I'm a rapper MC in the place to be, rapping about Christianity. All right. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. So, so what are the commandments? This is cool. The commandment is this, love. Love. Anything that you do without love, it profits nada. So what he's saying is love. And, and this, is, this is when we love like him. This is my quote. I just made it up. You want to write it down, you can take credit for yourself. But this is what I said. When we love like him, we will be happy like him. We need some overflowing loving Christians. This is my command. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. So he even sets a standard. How, how, what level am I supposed to love at? The same way I love you. The same way I put up with you. The same way I forgive you. The same way I give you chance after chance after chance after chance after chance. The same way I give you a break, you give them a break. The way I lay down my life, you lay down your life for them. And more you do that, the happier you will be. This is, this, to me, this is all good news to me. We need some joy, overflow. You know where joy means happiness, satisfaction, peace, pleasure, contentment? And see, when you're not obeying God, this is what's not happening. You're not happy. So when you're not happy, the devil could tempt you. I just saw something big there. 
When you're not happy, he can tempt you. When you're happy, he can't tempt you. Because he's trying to, see what the devil does is offer you temporary happiness for long-term misery, but he can only offer you something if you don't have it. But when I got joy, and I'm happily married, and I love God, and I love you, and joy is overflowing, what is the devil going to offer me? No thanks, I got something better. But when you're not happy, any temptation will do. That's why some people in this room, you're, you're involved in an adulterous affair. You left your faithful wife I'm just saying, you left your faithful wife and your family trying to find happiness in all the wrong places. And you know why? You were disobedient before you committed adultery. There was something missing in your life. Your relationship with God was lacking. Because you were hearing and casually hearing and walking out of here with no conviction. Leaving here just or, or leaving here dead or leaving here mad, but not leaving here repentive. I won't be happy. And I know this, if I obey God's word, I am happy. And I'm satisfied. Does anybody want to find satisfaction in God? In his word. I'm going to leave it here because we don't got, we're not out of time here. I'm going to give you one more time. I'm just going to say this about the joy of the Lord. When you obey God, so why do we obey? Well, one, we love him. And then number two, an obedient Christian is a happy Christian. Right? Happy. I don't, I want you, I don't obey God because I have to. I obey God because it's good. Why do you take the pills sometimes you take? Right, right. You're trying to take the edge off. Right. You got, some of us don't need another pill. You need the gospel pill. That's a little corny, but it's good. A little corny. I've heard it before, but that's corny. <laughs> but it's a good one. <laughs> so I'm saying, oh, my God, that was a good one, Pastor. I know, I know. <laughs> that was a good one. Someone's just going to remember that. What was that? You don't need another pill. You need the gospel. That's the only thing I remember. It was awesome, though. I'm just going to reemphasize, an obedient Christian is a happy Christian. Jesus has given us the word so that we will fi be filled with his joy. This word is filled with joy. And when we hear it and we repent and we say, God, and we come to Jesus, what we said, get empowered to live this new life. You get empowered to live the life you were created to live. You were not created to sleep around all over the place. Do you think that's going to make you happy? Temporary pleasure. You're trying to, you're giving yourself to a guy that's not even committed to you. So you think you're going to find like, oh man, I'm going to be happy. You're not going to be a happy person. You're going to, be te you're going to have some temporary pleasure. You think you were created to every morning wake up. And have to go to the liquor store and get a 40 ounce to take the edge off? And that's how you're surviving? Or, or take the money, the little money you have and go to a drug dealer and exchange a temporary high for all your money and your livelihood from your family and your future and your brain cells and your exchanging? Trying to find happiness? What is it? Do you think you're meant to live a lie that you come home and you're saying you're here, but you're not here, you're, you're there, and you're, all these lies, changing phone numbers and trying to, you know, cover up everything you're doing, and you don't even know who you are anymore because there's so many lies. Do you think that was a life that God created you to live? Think God created you to live a life of anger and hate and bitterness? And that's what Satan has stole from us. He stole our relationship with God. And I thank God Jesus came to get it back for us and empower us to live this life. 
The Word of God is an instruction book on how to live a joy-filled life. The, farther, the farther we get from God's will, the unhappier we are. The farther we get from God's will, the unhappier we are. And this is the last verse in John 17, 3. Now I am coming to you. Jesus, Jesus taught, he's praying. What is Jesus doing? He's praying to the Father. Right before he goes, he goes, I'm going home. He's praying to the Father. He goes, now I'm coming to you, Father. I told them many things while I was with them in the world. I told them a lot of things while I was with them in the world. So, look at this, so they would be filled with my joy. So they would be filled with my, this is why we love coming to church. Because you could come here depressed, you could come here hurting, you could come here lonely, you could be all out of sync, and then you come back here in the house of God, and you hear a word, you accept it, you act on it, and then joy fills your heart. So they would be filled with my joy. And they says this, I have given them your word. I have given them the, your word. Oh, man, you should never look at reading the Word and living for God ever the same. Because every time you obey this Word and you live out this Word, the happier you get. And now the enemy can't come with anything because what are you going to tempt me with? Like, what? You think I'm going to exchange what I got with my wife? I'm happy. And I'm happy because I did it God's way. Come on. We're happy because we did it what? Let's stop taking shortcuts, shortcuts that not lead to your purpose, shortcuts that not lead to your joy, and shortcuts that not lead to your breakthroughs. It's time to hear God's Word and obey big. We're going to continue this sermon on Sunday morning. You don't want to miss it. It is good. Pastor Robert, can you close us out, please? Wow, wasn't that just amazing? Would you give me the second and allow me to pray with you? Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God, we just come to you, Father, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the clarity and the revelation that you have brought forth, Father. I pray right now, God, for the brother or sister that's on the other side of this lens watching, God. I pray that you meet them right where they're at, God, and I pray that you meet all their needs according to your riches and your glory, Father. We give you honor, praise, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. So if this word has blessed you and you would like to partner with us, you can do so by clicking the link on the top or the link at the bottom. And WayFam, we'll see you on the next sermon.